Well, good morning and welcome to Kennewick First United Methodist Church. I'm so glad that you are able to join us today as we celebrate Pentecost. Today is the birthday of the church. I'm so glad that you're able to uh, be with us in this virtual way as we gather together to worship and celebrate this God who loves us. Uh, I'm so glad that you are here, whether you're gathered around a computer screen or at a kitchen table or in front of a television screen. You know, it is the Holy Spirit that occupies the space between us and binds us together as a church. And so I am so thankful that you are here uh, to join us as we uh, worship together. In just a moment, I'm going to invite Amerly Almerode, our uh, song leader, and Margot Cox, our accompanist, uh, to lead us in our first song of worship. But again, welcome to Kennewick First United Methodist Church, and welcome to church, my friends. Good morning, everyone. We are so glad to have you join us today on this Pentecost Sunday, where we celebrate the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So let's sing together, Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance. together here in our sanctuary here in the same place this would be the time that I'd invite you to to maybe stand up from the seat that you're seating in or uh, to move around the sanctuary and greet somebody wish them good morning and let them know that you're glad that they're here today and in a way pass the peace of Christ to one another but since we're not all in the same building at the same time what I'm going to ask you to do this morning is to do the same thing but in a virtual way I'm going to invite you to, to pick up your phone and maybe if you want to even pause this video and make a phone call just to let somebody know that you are thinking about them. Or if you want to send a text message wishing somebody good morning or maybe an email just letting people know that you care about them and that you're thinking about them today. And in a sense pass the peace of Christ with somebody um, who uh, you can connect with in a digital or virtual way. So let me invite your friends to greet one another and to share the peace of Christ with one another. So last week for our opening prayer, uh, I mentioned that uh, I was reading a poem by um, someone named Malcolm Geit, who uh, Jim Dethridge, a member of our congregation, had uh, recommended to me. 
And on this uh, Pentecost morning, uh, I wanted to share a, a sonnet that Malcolm Geit had, had written um, called simply Pentecost. And I think it's appropriate for our opening prayer as we spend this time in worship together. This is Pentecost by Malcolm Geit. Today we feel the wind beneath our wings. Today the hidden fountain flows and plays. Today the church draws breath at last and sings as every flame becomes a tongue of praise. This is the feast of fire, air, and water poured out and breathed and kindled into earth. The earth herself awakens to her maker and is translated out of death to birth. The right words come today in their right order, and every word spells freedom and release. Today the gospel crosses every border, All tongues are loosened by the Prince of Peace. Today the lost are found in his translation, whose mother tongue is love in every nation. Well, friends, I want to thank you for being so generous in your support of Kenwick First United Methodist Church and helping us to continue to not only be a church that worships together in this way, but also a church that continues to be in ministry to our community and to the people of Kenwick. Uh, I realize that this morning there are some people who are are tuning in who are part of other congregations around the region, and I want to thank you as well for your generosity and your support of your local churches and allowing them to continue to be part of the transforming work that God is doing in our communities. If you're one of those people that has made a commitment to support this church financially, I just want to remind you that you can continue to do that by either mailing in a a check to the church office through the the U.S. Postal Service, or if you want to, you can go to uh, our webpage, and up at the top uh, right-hand corner of the page, there's a little button that you can click there that will send you to uh, our PushPay account, which has a a server on it that's encrypted and allows you to to make a donation through our webpage, or even if you like, you can make a, a donation towards the work that we're doing here by texting Kennewick first to 77977 and you can make a donation that way. But I want to thank you so much for continuing to support the church, not only this church, but the church universal and all the work that is going on and all the things that the Holy Spirit is doing through us to, uh, to transform this world and create the kingdom of God around us. Thank you so much for your generosity. As I walk this great unknown, questions come and questions go. Was there purpose for the pain? Did I cry these tears in vain? I don't want to live in fear. I want to trust that you are near. Trust your grace can be seen. In both triumph and tragedy But I have this hope In the depth of my soul In the flood or the fire You're with me and you won't let go But sometimes my faith feels thin Like this night will never Catch every tear, or will you just leave me here? But I have this hope in the depth of my soul. In the flood or the fire, you're with me and you won't let go. Yes, I have this
Friends, would you join me in a liturgy of prayer as we give thanks to God for the gifts that he's given to us, and we ask for God's help in times of need and in times of trouble. Friends, would you join me in prayer? For the gifts of friendship, family, and communities of love. give you thanks. We pray for those who feel lonely, isolated, and afraid. Lord, hear our prayer. For first responders and medical personnel in harm's way to keep us safe. Lord, hear our prayer. For those dealing with health issues, illness, and disease. Lord, hear our prayer. For our local government officials in the Tri-Cities. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elected officials and leaders of our state. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our nation and other world leaders. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all of these things, Lord, as we pray that prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and Leviathan, which you formed to frolic there. All creatures look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. And when you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. 
May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. When the day of the Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speech, speak in others' tongues. As the Spirit enabled them, now they were saying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that each of us hears them in our native languages? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. You, listen carefully to, oh wait. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken to the prophet Hoel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit on those days. And they will prophesy. I will show wonders to, in the heavens below, above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Well, again, welcome, friends. I'm so glad that you're able to, to join us on, on a day like today, a day such as Pentecost. Today is the day that we celebrate what we have typically called the, the birthday of the church. You know, it, it marks the beginning in which the, the community of people that were gathered together and were followers of Jesus were, were instruments in the hand of the Holy Spirit to um, be in that unique place of bringing about the kingdom of God. Uh, before this, you had to be in the, in the class of a prophet or, or in some type of a position in order to, to be part of what God was doing in the world, but this marks a change in which the Holy Spirit works within the community of people to bring about the transforming work of the kingdom of God around us. You know, about 30 years ago when I was in college down at Southern Oregon, uh, back then it was Southern Oregon State College, it's Southern Oregon University now. But my wife, Jennifer, and I were, were students down at, uh, at Southern Oregon, and Jennifer was finishing up her uh, master's uh, work in teaching, and uh, I was getting ready to, to head off to seminary. I was a candidate for ministry, and while we lived down in, in Southern Oregon, we helped uh, run the, the youth ministry program at Medford First uh, United Methodist Church there in downtown Medford. And one Sunday evening after we had finished youth group, one of the, the students came up to me and, and said, so Mark, I'm uh, going to be writing a, a paper for my English class on the church. And I said, well, that's, that's great. That's really cool that you're, you're going to do that. And he said, yeah, I've been doing some research. And and from my research, uh, I've learned that the, the first church was in Jerusalem. I said, yeah, that's right. And, uh, we, we hear about it in the, the second chapter of, of Acts. And he said, yeah, but I haven't been able to find any pictures of it. Do you know where I can find a picture? Or do you have a picture of the first church? And as he said those words, at first I was a little confused until I realized that the student was making the same mistake that I think we all do from time to time, in which he was equating a building that sits on a corner or a building that's made out of stone and bricks 
as being the church. And I admit that I, I fall into that trap all the time as well. Uh, you know, I, I, I'll have a conversation with somebody and I'll, I'll let them know that I'm a pastor. And usually the next series of questions revolves something around like, uh, oh, so where, what, where are you pastor of what church? And, you know, I'll say, well, Kennewick First United Methodist Church. And say, oh, where is that? And I'll usually say Kennewick, Washington, from the book of Duh, right? Uh, but then they'll say, well, but where in Kennewick is it? And so then I'll say, well, it's on the corner of Kennewick uh, Avenue in Dayton. And, and I fall into that trap of, of saying I'm pastor of this church, which is a building, but I think we've all learned that, uh, especially in these last few months, that the church isn't a building, and that the church is not a, a, a pile of, of uh, uh, stones or bricks, but that, in fact, it is the people who uh, the Holy Spirit works within to bring about this kingdom of God. You know, for that high school student that was asking me for a picture of the church, I don't know whether in his head he had a, a picture of a, a Gothic stone cathedral or, or some, uh, you know, maybe a, a little white picket fence with a, a pointy top and a, a cross on top. Who, who knows? But in his mind, he didn't quite understand yet that the church was more than just a building. And I think that we've all been discovering that, uh, boy... Um, to the extreme in these last uh, couple of months. You know, ironically, in this story that we heard read uh, for us from the second chapter of Acts, when the Holy Spirit begins to move in the midst of this group of people, rather than building a building, the first thing they do is run out of the building that they've been in. And the, the power of the Holy Spirit allows them to share the goodness and the power of God. And not even languages, uh, not even barriers of language can keep that from happening. You know, this story that we call the birthday of the church is not a story that says the disciples were gathered together in an upper room and they decided to form a building committee or they decided to talk a wealthy investor into giving them money to build a building of brick and mortar. In fact, the birthday of the church is about the time when the Holy Spirit begins to move in the group of, of people who have been transformed by their relationship with Jesus and that power allows them to spill out into the streets and begin to share this good news of the one who's come to save us. So, you know, as I think about this story, and ironically as it is a story about how these people flee from a building to go out and spread the good news of Jesus and how we oftentimes get that reversed and we think of church as a building... You know, I, I love the images of this story. I love that as Luke records this in the book of Acts, that, that he gives us this, this image of these disciples in an upper room praying and this sound that is like a, a rushing wind begins to fill the room. And he gives us this wonderful picture of tongues of fire that sit on each of their heads and then that image of them spilling out into the streets to proclaim the goodness and the power of God. You know, there are lots of people who like to debate things, and if you're one of those people that likes to, to just have a, a good argument, you know, there's lots of debate that goes on about whether or not what Paul, or excuse me, what uh, Luke is describing is a, a literal tongues of fire that sat on their head, or whether it's more metaphorical. You know, every time I think of it as being more literal and tongues of, of fire sitting on each of their head, I always have pictures of, of the heat miser from Santa Claus's coming to town, right? Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm kind of starting to look more like the heat miser as the more days go by without a haircut. But, you know, uh, I'm not sure whether or not it was a, a physical manifestation of the spirit in, in tongues of fire or if it was a, a metaphor for the feeling they have. I kind of like that idea that it's a metaphor for the feeling where they realize something miraculous, something amazing is happening. And, you know, it, it feels like their head's on fire, like they've got to go out and do something about this. I, I kind of love that idea that, that there's something so pressing, so urgent that they've just got to spill out into the street and be able to share what is happening and the goodness of God. I, I love that image that, that Luke gives us. 
You know, and then as the story goes on a little bit further, it says that, that they spill out into the streets and they begin to proclaim the goodness and the power of God to, to all the people and all the various languages that are happening. And obviously the people who, who experience this on the street have all kinds of questions. And as the story goes, someone in the street offers an explanation and says, oh, they're just drunk. That's a great explanation for anything we don't understand, right? Oh, they're just drunk. And I love even more so that, that at the end of this, uh, when someone says, oh, don't pay attention to them, they're just drunk, Peter comes up and says, we're not drunk, it's only 9 a.m., which, by the way, is the worst excuse for saying you're not drunk. Peter obviously has never been on a college campus uh, on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock in the morning. That is no excuse to say that they aren't drunk. But Peter has an understanding of what is going on that he shares with us. In fact, he goes all the way back 1,200 years before this to the the words of the prophet Joel. And as he talks about the things that Joel said were going to happen, he, he says, this is what you're witnessing. Just as Joel wrote that there would come a day where we would all prophesy, that we would all speak forth the words of God, that we would dream dreams, that we would have visions And you're seeing this happen right now, right in front of you. You're seeing the work of the Holy Spirit in our midst, proclaiming the goodness of God. And then he goes to this next phrase that I think is important for us, that the prophet Joel said some 1,200 years before this. He said, there'll be a day when portents is shown in the sky. Now, portents is not a word that I use very often, And by very often, I mean I've never used that word. Uh, In fact, I have to admit, until I became a preacher and had to do Bible studies to preach on them, I didn't understand or didn't know what the word portents meant. I had to look it up. But portents is a a word that means, uh, it's a word for a, a sign or something monumental that is about to happen that will change your present situation. He says the prophet Joel was pointing towards an event that was going to be so monumental that it was going to change everything afterwards. And Peter says that the work of the Holy Spirit in this community is that magnificent and monumental thing. From this point on, they're never going to look at their relationship with God the same. They're never going to even understand their relationship with each other the same. And you know, as I hear this story of the work of the Holy Spirit and how this idea of the church not being a building but being the the people who who are bound together by God's Spirit. As I hear this story of a a symbol that, that warns people that things are never going to be the same, boy, it seems like there's a lot of parallels to May 31st, 2020. I mean, is it just me? I mean, if we want to talk about a sign in the heavens that says things will never be the same, I think the last few months that we've experienced together have taught us that things are never going to be the same. I think coming through the other side of this pandemic, we're never going to really look at church the same way. We're never really going to even be able to to understand ourselves in terms of this community of faith in the same way. And I hope that in these last few months we have come to that realization that the church is not this building, but that is in fact those people who have been transformed by God's Spirit who are working to bring about the kingdom of God. I think there's parallels to this story of the birthday of the church and this place that we are in now as we work together to bring about the kingdom of God and to be a church that represents our Savior in such a way. You know, in the last few weeks, we've had a a lot of talk and a lot of conversations about getting back to normal. And I I get it. I mean, I I understand that that we all want a break from the the health issues that we are afraid of and the the economic issues that we are going through and the fear of what our future is going to look like. I get that we want to go back to the way it was because the way things are now just seem so stressful and so full of sorrow and seem to be stealing our hope. 
But you know, I got to say, going back to the way things were, going back to normal, normal wasn't working very well. Normal wasn't working very well for the poor or for people who live in poverty. You know, normal wasn't working very well for an economic system that's based on on consuming so much that we can't sustain it anymore or greed. Normal wasn't working very well for people that our society said were essential in the work that they did for, for our community but who overwhelmingly paid them as little as possible to do that work that we said was essential. Normal wasn't working very well to bridge the gaps that divide us, whether they're political, if you uh, fall into a category of conservative or, or progressive. Normal wasn't working very well in those categories that, that divide us into camps. It wasn't working very well for us to to find any solutions to racism or sexism or, or other things that push us to the margins or dehumanize one another. Normal wasn't working very well for that. You know, normal wasn't working very well for a planet, for this creation that God set us in and, and told us to take care of, to be stewards of. Normal wasn't working very well. I mean, the list goes on and on of all the things that normal wasn't working very well for. And in this day that we celebrate the birthday of the church, in this day that we realize that the church is truly the the people who are bound together by God's Holy Spirit, that it is not a designated prophet, but that all of us speak the words of God, that all of us work towards a community that reflects loving God with all that we are and loving our neighbor as ourself. I mean, after all, Jesus told us there's no commandment greater than these. You know, on a day that we celebrate the church, I wonder who will be the prophet? Who will speak forth the words of God that says, you know what, normal wasn't working very well. Who will be the the church? Will it be your church? Will it be my church that stands up and says that creating a community that revolves around the idea of loving God with all that we are and loving our neighbor as ourself is is the goal. Will we be the prophets who who say that we will stand against injustice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Will we be the ones who pray that justice would flow like floods of living water from the throne of God? Will we be the ones who say we need something new? Will we be the ones who are the prophets of God in our community and stand for things like justice and compassion, for mercy and grace? And will we be part of this kingdom of God that God has called us to do and to be? You know, when the signs in the heavens show that things are going to change, will we be the church that ushers in the transforming presence of God? Will we love God and will we love our neighbor? Will we say normal just wasn't working? Or will we go back to normal and just be a building? I think you know what my prayer is. I hope that your prayer is the same. Amen? As we conclude our service this morning, I am so thankful for the presence of the Holy Spirit in my life, how he helps us to live the way that we should live and gives us faith that we could not have on our own. Holy Spirit, living breath of God, breathe new life into my Yeah.
spirit come abide within may your joy be seen in all i do love enough to cover every sin in each thought and deed and attitude kindness to So friends, receive this benediction this morning on this wonderful Pentecost Sunday. Go from here celebrating that we serve a God who loves us. Go from here rejoicing that through God's Holy Spirit and its work in us, we bring about a world of justice, of hope, and of grace. Go from here in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Speak.